One of the most recent movies which blew the roof off this place was Shazam. And with the news of an upcoming sequel, we decided to watch the movie yet another time but in 0.25 times speed. And we have some interesting things to share with you. Everything we managed to find out and all you have to do is sit back, grab some popcorn and enjoy. Introduction Before we start going into details, we thought we should let you know how it all started and where it all began, the meaning behind Shazam's name and the most important things surrounding him, simply what he's made of. The movie starts itself with a flashback where Sivana, him a little boy and his magic 8 ball in his hand. The flashback is from way back in 1974 and opens with Ben Crosby's rendition, Do You Hear What I Hear? Setting up this story at Christmas time while also reflecting the frustration of Savannah's character in this core memory. We also managed to see John Glover, an actor who has been part of the DC for a long time. He voiced the Riddler in Batman the Animated Series, he played Floronic Man, the scientist behind Poison Ivy, while also playing Lex Luthor's father, Lionel Luthor, Lionel Luther in the CW series Smallville and one of the questioning parts about him has to be his looks. How does he look the same for almost three decades in a row? Savannah's magic 8-ball shows seven symbols, leaving his father's car and blasting all the way to the Rock of Eternity, the place of magic in the DC Universe, and its keeper is none other than Shazam himself, a wizard who is a surviving member of the Council of Eternity in search of a champion to grant him all the power he has, the wisdom of Solomon, the strength of Hercules, the stamina of Atlas, the power of Zeus, the courage of Achilles, and the speed of Mercury. And if you connect the dots and take the first letters of all of those gods and you eventually get the name Shazam and the backstory of where it came from. Oh, and did you know that he was the first Captain Marvel and not the Brie Larson one? Yeah, don't forget that. But eventually, DC decided to go with Shazam as it makes more sense and to not let the confusion take over you. The Number 73 the movie is full of references that have been well hidden to say the least and first on our list comes the number 73, a number which has been mentioned a couple of times. Billy's social worker, M.M.E. Clover, tells him that they have contacted 73 Batesons in search of his mom, 73 tries was the lucky number, until they finally found her. 73 Batsons. Then Billy and Freddy get $73 from the lady in the park, whom they saved from a thief and as a thank you gesture, she gives them $73 exactly, the number which is actually a reference to Shazam's debut in the comics. Yes, Billy Bateson was created in the 1940s, but as we said before under the name of Captain Marvel, after which the first Shazam comic book was released in 1973, finally realizing what this crazy number 73 means. Freddy's Room Moving on, throughout the movie, Freddy's room is shown a couple of times, but there's one scene that goes into details, but only if you watch at 0.25 times speed. In Freddy's room, we see a lot of superhero stuff from Batman's Batarang, Superman's hat, a doll of Wonder Woman. However, the interesting part of the whole shot that many of you might not have noticed so far, the Time magazine on the shelf referring to the Man of Steel with headlines saying an act of war. This Time magazine is dated June 14th, 2013, the date when Man of Steel came out in theaters. This little detail shows homage to Superman and one of his most famous movies, but also a detail that shows just how important his character is in the entire DC Universe. Reef World Aquarium Next up, we have Billy Bateson on the train that will eventually lead him to the Rock of Eternity, but he still doesn't know about it. But before he goes, there's a little detail that you might not have noticed, a poster on the right side of the scene in that train that says Reef World Aquarium, and if you look closely at the poster, you'll see a picture of a family with the kid showing his hand to the fish behind the glass. This seems similar to Aquaman's shot in which little Arthur tries to talk to the fish in the little aquarium from the movie Aquaman. This shot from the train also leads us to yet another detail you might have missed, which is not that important but is definitely worth mentioning. On the train, there is an ad that says Kingsbury Publishing. This could potentially reference Vanessa Kingsbury, an escaped mental patient that was eventually recruited in one of the most dangerous DC groups, the Suicide Squad, despite the fact that she dies on the first mission as a member of the group. Wizard's Cave After the whole train situation and his journey, he finally arrives at the Rock of Eternity, the Wizard's Cave, now many of you might have noticed the golden mirror that is shown in the back, but how many of you know what it actually means? Well, we're here to tell you that it's a reference to the comic book's magic mirror. 
But if you look even closely, there is a golden scepter visible in the background that triangular topped golden stick is called Ibis Stick. Which according to the DC is a magical wand that has nearly unlimited power, a golden scepter that was once used by Ibis, who used it to cover all of Fawcett City in a protective force field. Black Adam Reference When Billy meets the wizard, he gives him a speech about the power he's about to be bestowed with, and if we listen closely throughout his speech and the show he puts on, he puts an emphasis on one word in particular, rock. This is of course a reference to Black Adam, who is shown as a silhouette but also the actor who will be portraying the role in the upcoming Black Adam movie, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. ACE Chemicals We've previously mentioned some of the stuff in Billy's room and the DC references, which are also very clear to see, but did you notice the ACE Chemicals logo on a steel tank in the back at the abandoned warehouse where Billy and Freddy test out Shazam's powers? Of course, if you're a Batman fan, then you know what we're talking about. You know that ACE Chemicals is what led to the birth of the Joker when fell into a tank with chemicals, much like the one featured in Shazam. Seth Green Cameo When Shazam and his foster family are attacked by Savannah at the cave, they teleport to a gentleman's club and when they're trying to think of a plan in a back alley, we see three people walking behind them, just passing by. But have you noticed one of the faces from those people? Probably not. Well, we're here to tell you that one of them is the actor Seth Green who decided to make a cameo in the movie, without a special reason at all, and that is because as the director of the movie, David Sandberg said, Seth Green accidentally bumped on the set of the movie that day, so he decided to make a cameo in the movie while he's there. Perspective And last but not the least, we see a baby Billy and his mom, and this is not a detail, but a scene that can only be noticed by the trained eye. A scene that is shown from two perspectives, one of Billy's and one of his mom's. In Billy's perspective, we can see bright lights in the scene, a happy memory from his childhood, while on the other hand, when his mom's perspective is shown, a dull scene, seemingly she doesn't want to remember it, when put picture to picture, you can see it clearly, but not only after we've told you about it. On a related note, tell us down in the comments below which of these details and easter eggs did you find yourself and already knew about before watching this video. And also don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you'd like to see more amazing videos like this in the future. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.